We've done the greatest players, the greatest goals. This time on Match of the Day Top 10, we are doing the greatest winning teams of the World Cup. Micah Richards and Alan Shearer and um, myself are all here having no idea what it's like to win a World Cup. <laughs> Imagine being part of a side that won that trophy. Oof. It would be the greatest ever. Creme de la creme. Pinnacle. It's funny, the only thing I look back on my whole career with, I mean, you obviously you always have things you wish you'd done better, but there's only one thing that I think, if only. Yeah. And that was that penalty shootout against Germany. And if, if we'd have won that and then you in a final and the chance of that footballing immortality yep. that, that comes with winning a World Cup. It's the only thing. And Bobby Robson said this. I, I did a documentary with him a couple of years before he, he, he passed away and he said the same thing. He said, the one thing, he said, I, you know, I don't think about it every day, but most days. It is, it's right though. You said it, immortality. It's like, what, where else can you go? Mm. That's it. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? It's top. top. Retire. Is it going to happen, though? Go to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to happen? Come on. It'll happen one day. Yeah? Yeah, of course it will. I think we'll win one of the next three yeah. with this lot of players we've got. Well, we better yeah. hurry up, because you might not have much longer. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what a jovial start to the show. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you're, you're probably quite right, though. Uh, let's have a look at our <laughs> top ten winners. Uh, in no particular order, as always. England's heroes led by Bobby Moore in 1966, the Brazil team of 1970 that dismantled Italy in the final, the 1998 French side uh, becoming champions on home soil, Maradona's Argentina at Mexico 86, the Spain of 2010, the second of their three major trophies in a row. The Brazil team of 2002 made the list with the three R's up front, champions of 1982. Italy, inspired by Paolo Rossi, the West Germany side that took the crown at Italia 90, Argentina of 1978, including uh, Spurs' legends, Ozzy Ardiles and Ricky Villa, and finally, most recent winners, France, make the list after some dazzling performances four years ago. Now, obviously, we've not gone into the sides that won it in 30, 34 or in 38, <laughs> um, because um, none of us saw those. Yes, before you start, Alan, not even me. Um, not even me. So they're obviously mostly modern winners. Um, so bear that in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you give me your order, which I would like Alan first, please. Ten is Argentina in 78. Nine is France, 2018. Eight, Italy, 82 in Spain. Seven, Argentina, 86 and six, Spain in South Africa, 2010. Ooh. Ooh. That's quite low. Right, Michael. Uh, uh, number 10, France in Russia, 18. Nine, Argentina, 78. Eight, Italy in 82. Seven, Spain, 2010. Yeah. Six. six, France in 98. Nearly the same. Similar, it? similar, very, isn't very it? Very similar. Yeah. Um, yes. Just um, Argentina, 78, you've both got in there. I loved Argentina's side in 78. Of that, you know, Ardiles and Kempes won the golden boot. Ardiles now. Kempes, 2-0. Um, all those, Luque, I remember the score of a few goals as well. Luque, waiting for it to line right. Oh, a brilliant goal! So... You've probably got them there because they're not much memory, just stats. Yeah, just yeah. stats, like, looking yeah. at all the players. And they, and did, they did have that slightly suspect 6-0 win over Peru. Yeah, Peru, yeah. Mm. A bit dodgy, wasn't it? It's, was that I think it was Brazil very dodgy. as well, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. and, it, and they, they got them to the final where they, yeah. they played Holland. But I remember cheering all the goals in when they played against Peru. Because England were in it, I thought, I'd go with host nation because I loved all, the, team. all the ticker tape was all flying out and all that kind of stuff. But they, yeah, there's, I think there were pressures possibly put on 
people in that. And there was only 16 teams, 16. I think there were representatives of um, certain <laughs> people uh, were seen in the Peru dressing room before the game. <laughs> oh, my uh, word. Corruption again. There were actually pictures of, of you know, the, the president of Argentina and, and, <laughs> Kiss and Kissinger in the Peru dressing room before the game. There are actually factually pictures of that. And um, and the Peruvian goalkeeper, which is Argentinian. Best to look. Ooh, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's, it's 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 one of those things. That it has been talked about forever as as a slightly suspect. Surely thing. people can't stoop that low. Surely. Well, I, I mean, yeah, people would, but come on, six to win six, it's, it's too obvious, isn't it? So they had to win by four clear goals and ended up winning six six nil. Mm. And Brazil went out. But it was a good final. It was a decent final. Yeah, Kempes and um, that, that Dutch team was, was really strong, but they didn't have Croy. Didn't have Croy. Didn't go, which was, was a big miss for them. Um, right, we'll go... Um, I'm actually quite surprised here with both of you to have Spain 2010, because that was one of the great international signs, wasn't it? Oh, that total... They were. That yeah. football, tiki tack and all that <clears throat> stuff. Yeah, they did. They, they were beaten... In the opening game. In the opening game, yeah. Switzerland, wasn't it? Yeah, one Switzerland 1-0. Um, and after that, they were just... And after that, they were just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't score a, a, a multitude of goals. That's what I mean, that's why. It was like 1-0, 1-0, 1-0. Yeah, nil, one, nil, yeah. Nil. yeah. That's true, but they hardly conceded. And as a defender, I'm sure you appreciate that. Yeah, but in you a know, World what, Cup, you want to see goals. You want to see flair. You think about... Yeah, but you see that Iniesta, yes. Xavi, David Villa, David Seth Silva. Fabregas. David Silva, yeah. um, PK, Pujol, yes. Ramos, and a young Busquets. Ramos who Ramos played right back, I think, in most of that tournament. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, Pedro, Pedro, he was he was, he was so underrated, yeah. Pedro. Yeah. Time of his runs were brilliant. Yeah. So you know, I'm surprised because that that beautiful football they played and they just people couldn't get the ball off them. So it was. A, mm. I'd, I'd I'd have had those. Would you had the Maya? Time. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That the team was so good, sensational, so good. Um, Italy eighty-two. Alan, you both got them in eighth. Actually, both got them in eighth. They drew the first three games mm. in that uh, in right. that tournament, um, and then it all came to life. Twenty-four off. teams. A certain Rossi, correct? Yeah. Ponti for Italy and Paolo Rossi. He was getting a lot of stick because he, did you know he was banned before the World Cup for almost two years uh, for match fixing? Um, and there was a lot of um, people in Italy, they, they were really, really enraged the fact that he was in the squad because of it and he was brought in by the coach. And it was, there was a lot of debate about whether he should be there. In the first three games, he, he, he did nothing. The team, you know, as Alan said, crawled through. And then he sprung to life and ended up scoring six goals. Top scorer, golden won boot. the Golden Boot, won the World Cup. What a turnaround. Mm. But you knew all that, Micah, so I don't know why I yeah, well, yeah. put time on you. But the notes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they drew their first three games and then went on and yeah. beat Argentina and Brazil. And it's been turned in. Paolo Rossi was there again. One of the great World Cup celebrations with the, the, the goal, second goal. What, what was it? Oh, oh right. I've seen that celebration, yes! Yes! Tardelli! Tardelli. Marco yes. Tardelli! Marco Tardelli! 2-0 to Italy! Tardelli the scorer! It was fantastic, wasn't it, as he yeah. went away. It's just a brilliant celebration. Yeah, I do remember I've seen that. Yeah. The winners from four years ago in, in one of the most memorable World Cups um, and one of the great finals and they also played that incredible game against Argentina. Yeah. You've both got them really kind of low down. Is that, you don't think that's a particularly strong team? I mean, it was, wasn't it? No, it was a strong team. It was a great final, thoroughly deserved. Um, but when you look at others, it's like... It was a, it was a strong list, wasn't it, from one to ten? Well, it's World Cup winners. So. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 very, it's very strong, yeah, it was a very strong list. Yeah. It was just, I think just think there's better teams, to be honest. These had some individual brilliance, didn't they? Like, not just respect Stephen and Zomzi. You know, he, he's, in, he's in that squad. Good good squad player and stuff, but... You've picked out just four Stephen No, no, but he was at bad. Stoke, wasn't he? He was, yeah, I mean, what, he was at Stoke. What have you got against him? What's he done to you? He must have done something. No, he's not done anything, but I mean... He didn't feature, did he? 
it's too I, often. I, I'm sure he had a few games in there. <laughs> 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 um, what has he done? To and then Giroud. The this, wasn't that a tournament where Giroud played the yeah, whole and didn't, didn't score? Stop, but he was. He was ex. I'm not saying, but imagine. You know, you go into the World Cup and you don't. Yeah. Do, but well, the funny thing, both... What's both his name? That happened in the 98. Both with, World um, Cups, France have won. They did Stefan really Givosh. Givosh, yeah. Did he play he came, well? Did he play he well, to, though? Uh, he played in Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle he? he came to Newcastle with, with World Cup winner, thinking... Awful. Well, he wasn't that good. <laughs> really, Stephen and Zonzi and... Um, Stefan Givosh. Um, <laughs> hope you're not, hope you're not watching, lads. <laughs> I hope you're not watching or listening. <laughs> Right, give me top fives. Micah. Ooh, I've gone uh, West Germany, five. Should be higher this. England, four. I need Ooh, to have a rethink. But, uh, very controversial. Three. Gone Brazil, 2002. Argentina, uh, 86, number two. And the Brazil, 1970. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised you've gone one from so long ago. I know, yeah, but the stats. I, I've done my research, yeah. Gary. Oh, the, believe me, it's the right decision. Is it really? <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I think, I think. I don't know how to <laughs> think. Anyway. Alan? Five, West Germany. Four, Brazil, 2002. Three, France, 98. Two, England, 66. And one, Brazil, oh. 1970. That's two we've agreed on now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. People don't want to see us agreeing. <laughs> I think yeah, I think this, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. No-brainer, that one. Not that I've seen it, but... Well, you've both got in five, West Germany. Um, that was obviously the 1990 World Cup. 1990, which yeah. They beat us along the way in the penalties in the semi-final, which was, seems to talk about forever. And it, What were they like? The result never changes. They were a very good side. Yeah. They were... I think they were probably the... You know, they kind of steamrolled everyone until they got to us, and they were winning comfortably. Klinsman, Bremer, Klinsman, Bremer, Bremer was, so many good. They're all good. Andy Bremer was superb. Goal, beautiful goal, Bremer. He scored a free kick against us with one foot, and then in the final took the penalty with his other foot. No way! I didn't know that. That is unbelievable. That's incredible. That is class. Yeah. I mean, he was so two-footed that you could do... I mean, how? No, no. Would you even attempt to do that? In you training? the World Cup final? No. In training, I'm not even sure I'd try it. Yeah. Never <laughs> <laughs> <It's left laughs> mind in a yeah. final. World Cup final. I mean, the World Cup final was a pig of a game. It was awful. I mean, it was scruffy, it was messy, it was... And the game was won, well, with the Andy Brown. Yeah. With, you know, Argentina. Against Argentina, oh, yeah. Against Argentina. It's kind of tired Argentina and Maradona passed his best. OK. Um, but oh, what's Klinsman? Klinsman's a nice. We've oh, got, to work, got to work to him in the, in the Euros. He's a class act. He's Proper, a isn't he? lovely, lovely he is, man. Yeah. He's great. Intelligent. And, you know, he knows the game. He's, he's always a welcome addition when he comes yeah. to join the panel. And, and, well, hopefully he'll be in Qatar. I'm sure he will be. Lovely guy. Yeah, he's great. He really is. So they were a very good side. And, you know, no one really gave England a chance in the semi final. But we were very, it, there was nothing in it. We were as good as them. And, well, I think Waddle hit the inside of the post and it bounced out. And me and Platt, who were running in, it went right between in extra time. You know, that's it's not meant to be when that happens. Oh, it's a bit like you're in the, the Euros with the Gaza and the studs, studs just yeah. fractioned. How good was Waddle? Because he does it up the Waddle radio was an unbelievable. He was fantastic, Chrissy Waddle. Oh, he really, really was. Oh, he just, and he didn't look like a footballer. And he was like, blah, 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 and he ran. But he'd do that little shimmy one way. And then, he, I mean, the understanding I had with him was, I mean, his crossing was superb. And he'd just go like that and make my run, knowing that he'd hit the area. He knows the game well, So he, he could gamble. But he could beat people and he could, you know, he could play. He was super bright and on the pitch. Um, he went to Marseille, he was one of their big heroes. You, you, you talk about people in Marseille, about Chris Waddle, and he's like, whoa, one of the greatest ever players for them. Um, and the other, th the other thing was, when I, when I, after Barcelona, I signed for Spurs, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I signed for Spurs, because, like, they've got Gaz and they've got Chris Waddle. I think, oh, God, can I play with Chris again? Because he would be fantastic. So I go on holiday and I get a call from my agent saying, Tottenham have just sold Chris Waddle to Marseille. Why? I'm going, you what? <laughs> oh, it was like, honestly, it was like someone taking 15 goals out of my pocket and just throwing them away. 
Because that's it was just <laughs> yeah, he was very good. Probably exaggerating slightly, but it would have been an extra five, ten goals a season. So where did he go from? Tottenham uh, to Marseille. Very, yeah, very great, good, very good player. Great player, no question about that. But yeah, but that West Germany side was strong, and then we've like Brazil 0-2. Um, that was in Ronaldo, was in Rivaldo, Rivaldo Ronaldinho. Yep, the three R's. Yeah. What a team. That's a good turn by Rivaldo. Fantastic goal. It was riveting. It was ruthless. And it was Rivaldo. What a team. Brilliant team. Carlos, yeah. Cafu. Did for England, of course, in the quarter final of the game. And the. Um, do you think Ronaldinho meant the free kick? The one that beat Seaman, you know, in the top corner? I think, he, says, he says he does, uh, but no, I, don't I don't think, think I've so. seen Ronaldinho play a lot, and I don't think he's capable of miss hitting a free kick by that far. So I'm going to give him the benefit of Is a lot of doubt. Is that because he's Brazilian, though? No, it's because he's if... Ronaldinho and he's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Would he hit it that far? I, know, I, but, just... I know it's too much. I think it probably not. But I mean, he's an, he's an unbel- incredible player, but ah, yeah, it bit, just it's a bit of a felt so sorry for Seaman. Like he's only uh, he's only I mean, this far yeah. out of his. Yeah. I mean, you think he, he's absolutely in the top corner, wasn't it? It was a bit of a fluke for me. That was against uh, Ashley Cole and uh, Ronaldinho, wasn't it? Like they had a oh, few Ash- battles, didn't they? So Ashley Cole was fantastic. Every time, I remember that. I mean, he was a player, Ashley Cole. I mean, he, he, obviously, we all know how great he was as left uh, left back. Certainly, probably England's greatest ever left. I back, think I so. And he played hundred games and stuff. And. But he was also a player that really turned up in the big tournaments because yeah. a lot of big name players never. Re- some of them didn't quite. Not many went past him, but, but if even, any. even you know Cristiano, Ashley Cole. Yeah. He, yeah. He, was, was, he always had him, didn't he? Always had him. Too tight, didn't he? He, he read the game, a, read the pass. Yeah, such a good defender and good with the ball. And England's yeah. best left back ever. I think so. Uh, France '98. Um, Alan, you got them very high in three. They yeah. That was the side of obviously Zinedine Zidane and Thierry Henry and it's Stefan Givard. Stefan Givard, yeah. <laughs> the aforementioned. Yeah. It's Thierry Henry, and he's turning this into a bit of a one-man show. I did the um, did the final as a presenter on site, so Des Lynham was the main presenter, but I was at the game, and I was given the job of um, David Ginola was a, a, an extra pundit, but they, did, they didn't have him in the studio, but they had him alongside me. Now, David was left out of that World Cup squad. <laughs> and it was quite controversial that he was left out. And it was because he, he did something in, in the previous qualifying. So he, he, did, he made a big mistake and it cost them severely. And he was ultimately left out. I, I, mean, I mean, poor fellow. He was having to pretend that he was really, really happy. But and wanted to see inside <laughs> It was so painful, and it was being, oh, so David, you must be, yes, it's great. It's great. <laughs> but I saw him, you know, when the goals went into the game, I could see him go, <laughs> <laughs> I just felt it was just brutal for him. Um, but I suppose, you know, to leave a player of, of, of that quality out shows how. He how was class, though, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. England 66, <sighs> and you've got, I mean, they probably weren't perhaps the best, but obviously yeah, but it's England. The story so of England, them, Wembley. That high, you know. We talk about the wingless the wonders, they were called. That was yeah. obviously a change in the tactics towards a slightly more negative style of football and a defensive approach, which prior to that, you know, there were a million goals in all the, and even in the 66 World Cup, there was loads of goals. And it was really open, except for England played really kind of measured, but it worked, didn't it? Well, it had to be it, it, it had to be number two for me, similarly because of where it was. It was England, and I mean the story about the final in terms of Jeff Hurst and yeah. and Jimmy Greaves yeah. and everything else, incredible. Do you remember? You mentioned that the story? immortality for those. Yes. Wherever you see or hear about those guys, and rightly so, because they've been to somewhere that no one's been. And it's Hurst. In the final. What an achievement for those boys. Yeah, I know. All the names, isn't it? Well, Charlton. Yeah. Banks, you just know the whole Moore, team. Hurst. Bobby Styles, obviously Jack Charlton, yeah. Bobby Moore, yeah. Alan Ball. Yeah. Jimmy Ball Greaves. Is unbelievable. He kept going for 120 minutes. Jimmy Greaves is the is the is this kind of kind of tragic story of that World Cup because Jimmy Greaves was obviously it was probably yeah. the, the greatest England striker ever. Goal scoring was his goal scoring was he was unbelievable football. He was successful in Italy. He didn't stay there for that long, but he came and he was just unbelievable. And he, he was injured at the start of the tournament and stuff. And then um, in came Jeff Hurst, 
And then Greaves got fit again for around the final, but Sir Alf Ramsey stuck with Jeff Hurst. And in those days, there were no substitutes. Not even a substitute, not one in 66. So he couldn't even be on the bench to be brought on. So you're just out of it. What, what, what do you mean? There's no substitutes at all? No, no. Unless someone gets injured, all, obviously. All, no, not even if you get injured. You, you weren't allowed to get injured that, in those why, days. That's why you had things in, in those days, like Burke Troutman breaking his neck in the cup, FA Cup final and carrying on played the whole game. So what's game. the point in having the rest of the squad then? I, I, I... Well, I suppose you can change players from the, the next game. This, that's bizarre. But it's, the game's when you old. When you started football, it was one sub. One sub when I started, one yeah, sub. one sub. But you, you could use one sub, but you could have three on the bench, or you could just have, there was just one sub. I think when I first started, it was just one sub. Right, yeah. Just it was, one it was, sub. yeah, a squad of 12, and it was yeah. number 12. You never saw a number 13 ever. So what was and, the it, and also, of... all the players were always 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah. and the substitute would be 12. You, you, there were no change. you know, you wouldn't have a name on your shirt. So you, if you played, you just played 10, and if you didn't play, someone else would wear 10. No way. I know, it's changed, Micah, isn't it? Do you actually feel as if you're trying to educate place? one of your children here? Well, he's young enough to be <laughs> my grandson, almost. <laughs> the game must have been walking pace to get no, well, no injuries. Or, no, there like, was injuries. No, you just no, weren't no, allowed to... But they just carried on. No, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if you... Can if you, you, go, remember, if, if you, you know, go down, you know, you're just down to what, ten men. What about the tackles? You remember, not remember the Chelsea and Leeds Oh, uh, kick lumps have each other. They just Chelsea carried on. What have you? I tell you what, Micah, men were men back in there. <laughs> <laughs> men were men. Oh, no, oh, the boys love great. Yeah, it used to get up two hours before we went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Go down, call me. Wow. Uh, yeah, and it went to extra time, don't forget. So it was 120 minutes and all 22 players played the whole thing. No, not one substitute. So the sad thing was for Greaves, he couldn't even sit on the bench with a chance of coming on. Oh. And then, of course... Uh, the decision w uh, that Sir Alf Ramsey made was justified completely because yeah. Jeff has got a hat trick. And here comes Hurst. He's got some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. It's four. Wow. That's, a in a World Cup final. <laughs> That's mind blowing. Yeah. A lot of the under 35 since that's yeah. the uh, remember, audience we're appealing to. I remember to getting now. Jeff Hurst's autograph a long, long time ago. And it, it got a tiny Jeff Hurst. Three and sixty-six. <laughs> I love it. It was brilliant. I love that. Is it that good? Is proper. Three and sixty-six. Something like that. I think it's three and sixty-six or three in the World Cup final. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Argentina eighty-six. Mike, you've got them in second. Alan quite well down in seventh. It was no, Maradona's tournament. It was Maradona's team. I mean, it, it's often said that it was not a very strong Argentinian team, and he carried them. But it, I, I don't think that's fair. I think they had a, a lot of good players in that. Two team. against you guys. Two in the semi-final, I think, as well. Yeah, two against Belgium in the semi-final. Two against Belgium, yeah. Going at them again. Brilliant run by Maradona. Fantastic goal. Unbelievable. World class. And thankfully, he didn't get one in the final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the goal goal yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was, it, he was... In that World Cup, he was absolutely out of this world unbelievable i think probably as good as anyone's ever played in any world cup in the, in history because he was so dominant so incredible mm. the goals he scored and oh wow. the things if you you know if you go on youtube and look at the highlights of of maradona 86 and well, that's what i watched before some of the bits he did, even in the england game i not just the, the obviously the greatest yeah, yeah. the greatest of the goals but also even the build-up play towards the hand of God goal, he does an unbelievable bit of skill. And there's the things he did on the football pitch, it was like, how, how can you do that? It was like things you, you couldn't do, so... And, and what a personality. Mm -hmm. Five, five foot four, you know? Five foot four. Five foot four. Yeah, I seen him once at a City game, because he was... Yeah. Obviously, Aguero was going out with his daughter. Yeah. Well, they've so got... Okay, these, knows, yeah. They've got Aguero as the dad and Diego as the... The granddad, isn't it? Yeah, Messi, Messi's involved in it. Messi's he's got, in, oh, he's he's yeah. got he's, he's, he's involved. What is he? Uh, he's the godfather. godfather. Yeah. Yes. Poor kid's got a bit of pressure on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, crikey. I hope he can go play cricket. <laughs> uh, uh, Brazil, 1970. You're in agreement, even though neither of you would have um, remembered that tournament. No. But they were, they were so good. Rivellino, and it's Pelé, he's got it! Pelé has scored! 
good. And that is Brazil's 100th goal in the World Cup. This is probably one of the easiest decisions, even though I never saw that, that team. I think the way everyone eulogises about all of that team. Yeah. Uh, the football they played, the names that they uh, that they had in uh, in that uh, squad and in that team, so it had to be. And I, I'm, I'm right in Gerson, saying, Rivellino, right in Pelle, saying, Josinho scoring every game in the You're tournament is the only person right. ever to do that. Still, yep, correct, unbelievable, that is correct statistic. Yep. yep. My dad told me about this team and said it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, he said it was the best. Uh, of the that, best that, of I mean, role. they won it in a canter as well. And there was the famous game, obviously, in the in the. Group stages against England is is the game that they beat England by one goal to nil, and the goal scorer was. Uh... Pelly. I'm gonna go. No, you've no. just told me Jason you're scoring every. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm not listening to you. Oh, God, no, that's fine. Get Alan's tablets now. Get his meds. Apologies, guys. That was good. So, yeah, Jezinho scored, and it was, a you know, but the famous moment, well, there's two famous moments aside from the goal in that game, and one is is the bank save. Yeah. Yes. The bank save, the arguably the greatest save of all time. Pelé's header. Pelé's header downward, up, oh, flicked that it, one. Over yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that many yeah. times. And the other one is um, the tackle on more when Lynn could score. Gaisino, just down the middle. Good tackle by Moore. The perfect timing. We need to uh, recreate got, this in the World got, Cup, don't we? You got a decent voice, eh? That was nice, wasn't it? Was it? Soulful voice. Oh, wow, I'm brilliant. I've always thought I had the worst voice ever, but what anyway. The, what's the line after that? Who cares? <laughs> Was it Bobby Belton the ball? Three lines on it. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, yeah, but that Brazilian team, would, I mean, they had everything. Everything. Who, what, name of the well, any other, other players that were really, really good? Jairzinho. Uh, Costal. Uh, Carlos Alberto. Carlos Alberto. Oh, what a footballer. He was a, he was a fullback. Yeah. Yes. Their captain. Yes. He was an unbelievable player. I met him. I mean, Brazil produced... The best, though. Produced so many players. I mean, How do they keep it, doing it, though? Well, they, I think the population's around 250 million. Yeah, it's big. So it's that big. Helped, you know, it's like four times the size of ours. But, but it's also... It's ingrained in them, football, isn't it? It's, you know, football and dance, the carnival. And yeah. yeah. You're going to give us a wine? <laughs> A wine. Bottle of, a bottle of wine. Oh, I'll give you a glass of wine. <laughs> a bottle of wine. I'll give you a glass, but not. not <laughs> but they were. No, <sighs> they were so good. They were so good. And Agreed on Brazil. Uh, yeah. Finally, that's two now. Yeah, yeah, no. What a way to finish. Yeah. Thank you, chaps. So, so that is our top 10 World Cup winners. Brazil at number one, as um, I'm sure you'll agree with. But if you don't, you can use the hashtag um, MOTD top 10. Bye for now. Yeah.